In this box, I have an Engway C20 folding electric bike. Let's get it open and see what it looks like. Engway are sponsoring this video, but comments and opinions are all my own. And this is what it looks like inside the box. Incorrectly, I assume that since it was a folding bike, it will actually come pre-assembled, but it looks like I'm gonna have to build it myself. What do you get in the box then? Well, you get the saddle, the stand, a plastic mudguard, a set of pedals, a set of tools to help you assemble it, the front wheel, the handlebars and the steering column, a slim power brick, but unfortunately it comes with a European configured uh, plug socket, but they also throw in a travel adapter. Now this travel adapter is very cheap and plasticky but uh, I guess it will work. But what I might actually do, if I have one in the house, I will cut this off and put a UK plug socket on the end. And of course, you get a set of instructions. After fitting the saddle and the kickstand, I assembled the handlebars. The steering column has a bit of a slope on it, so I'm f leaning it forward uh, which means that the handle here is actually on a on the side. It's not in line with the uh, middle of the bike. Ah, there you go. Next, I fitted the headlight and the mudguard, followed by the front wheel. These hub washers have a little knobbly bit that slots into the forks. Next we have the pedals. A lot of mess is produced on packing an e-bike. Well, that's the e-bike assembled. Uh, I've switched the brakes around the other way, so the right hand uh, operates the front brake and the back operates the back. Um, this European thing is uh, slightly different to the UK. Uh, so it's fully assembled. Some adjustments I still need to make, such as the height of the seat and the handlebars, but uh, it's time to start it up. And it operates via a key. Now the keyhole is just to here, and it's actually part of the battery. It's a bit fiddly the first few times. So you can go in and it gives it a twist, one twist, and then you can switch it on. Another twist, you push it in, I think. There you go, you push it in and give it a twist. And now you can actually take the battery out. And you have to take the key out first of all. So this lever here splits the bike in two. So you pull it out. And then this is the tricky part. <laughs> there you go. And now I should be able to just remove the battery. There you go. Oh. Just settle that on the ground. Put the bike back together. Now I have the battery out, I can see how the key works. So at the moment it is in the off position. I can turn it on by rotating it clockwise. That is now on, it's off again. And now if I push it down and then turn it all the way around to lock, as you notice the bar here went into the battery. Now I can take the key out and then that is how I remove the battery. So for charging, I need it in the off position. So as the battery is charging, and it will take about six and a half hours according to the instructions, let me show you a few things about the bike. It has a 250 watt electric motor. Its maximum speed is 15 and a half miles an hour or 25 kph. It has mechanical disc brakes. It has a waterproof rating of IPX4, which basically means it can cope with light rain and splashes. With the battery, it weighs 30.7 kilograms. Seven Shimano gears. It has a front and rear light, including brake lights. Front suspension, it has a rear bike rack 
and 20 inch fat tires. Now one thing I want to point out, and this is very important if you want to use a bike rack, you've got to consider the following. Will this e-bike or any other e-bike fit on your bike rack? Because you've got several things going on here. The fat tires, will they fit in the runners of your bike rack? The clasp on the bike rack, will it actually go around this very thick frame? And will the straps actually fit around the wheel itself? And of course there's normally a weight limit on these bike racks, another thing to consider. The following day, with the battery fully charged, I took it for a test ride. I very much like the contrasting white on black display. From here you can see how much battery power you have, your speed and your current PAS setting, as well as how many miles you've done. I know the camera looks like it's giving off a lot of reflections, but when you're riding you don't notice any of that. And I still have the cellophane screen protector on it at the moment. Now for my hill test. See that? That's the hill. Uh, I don't know if you can tell, but it, the top of it appears to be higher than where I am at the moment. And it's probably a slope of one in four, maybe? I don't know. Uh, I'm going to try it without any pedal assist. And then I'm going to try it with step five or option five pedal assist. Of the full amount of pedal assist. I'm not looking forward to it because it's uh, hard work. <laughs> Okay, first of all, climb one without any pedal assist. Oh God! <laughs> I didn't make it at all. I don't even get halfway. Let's try again, but this time with pedal assist. Standing up now. Oh, this is much better. <laughs> oh, much easier. In fact, I could probably change gear. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Tell you what, that is very, very tiring. But I managed to do it. Standing up with pedal assist on. F five, fifth setting. So let me tell you what I think about the Engway C20 Pro. First of all, I found it very comfortable and a very relaxed riding position. The seat is soft and spongy. I particularly like the design where it looks very organic and tough to me. This part here reminds me of a bone. I quite like the fact that on the front here you have two water bottle holders. Now I didn't realise what they were until my brain kicked in because uh, normally they're up here where the saddle is. And of course there's no place to put a bottle so they put it at the front. Now I've been riding it around some country paths, muddy trails and some mountain bike tracks but I don't think it is a mountain bike. It doesn't look like a mountain bike for one thing even though the, the big fat tyres do soak up a lot of the bumps and what have you I think they're too small for actually riding out onto tough terrain. However having said that I think it's a great ride to just put around the shops go for um, a little explore in the city or the town go up and down country tracks and whatnot. Um, very ideal for that kind of thing. And because of the, the folding structure of the bike, the fact that you can, it compresses down into a small little suitcase, uh, I think it's ideal to take with you on a, mo on a motorhome or a camper van. Especially put it on the back, on the bike rack, and then when you go across on a ferry, take it down, compact it down, fold it down, and then put it inside your motorhome or camper van so you don't have to pay that extra ferry charge. One thing I'd like to point out is that it does have a throttle, which would mean it is illegal in the UK and probably Europe to, for that matter. 
However, very cleverly, they have made it so that it's out of the box, it's switched off. You can't use the throttle. Well, you can twist it, but it doesn't do anything. Now, there's a set of things you can do to make it work again, but uh, I don't know what they are. Now, on to the things I don't particularly like. Uh, first of all, it's a really minor thing, is uh, because I use cameras a lot on my phone while, I, while I'm riding, I tend to plug it in, plug my phone in and my camera sometimes into the USB port of the battery on my DIY bike, my DIY electric bike that is. Uh, however, there's no USB port on this bike, so uh, I can't charge my phone as I'm cycling along, you know. So that is a bit of a disappointment, but not a game changer. Now, it's supposed to have a really good range, but so far I've done eight miles, and out of the five bars of the battery indicator, I've got three left. However, having said that, I have been using um, pedal assist numbers one through to five, four and five mainly, so that maybe that would be the, the, uh, the, uh, the cause of that there. A quick update on the range, I've ran the battery almost flat, there's hardly any juice in the, in the bike at all, it won't go very fast anymore, but I've managed to do 36 miles, and that was mainly using 3, 4, and f maybe not 5 so much, but yeah, 3 and 4. So how much does it cost? Well, £950, but I'll leave an affiliated link and some discount codes in the video description so when it's on sale you can bag yourself a bargain. Right, that's it. Um, thank you very much for watching and goodbye.